What's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are having a blessed evening. I uh, just want to say big shout out to everybody that's tuning in and live. Um, this is Sunday night service with Pastor KJ52. <laughs> Not wearing anything priestly or uh, pastoral right now. I'm actually sitting in the backyard of my childhood home, and um, there's a couple things that uh, I've been doing in my life group that I thought would be kind of dope to share with you guys. So if you have a comment uh, or if you just feel like you're feeling it, drop it down below. Um, and I would love to uh, chat with you. Uh, otherwise, you can say amen, or if it applies to you, you can say oh me. All right. Uh, tonight we are looking at the story of the life of David, and uh, this is a series that I've been going through with my life group with some of the men at my church, and uh, we've just been going through step by step looking at <clears throat> David's life and a couple different things. So I'm going to pick up with you guys where we picked up yesterday, uh, and this is the story of when. David jumps into the service of Saul. Uh, if you don't know who Saul is, um, Saul was Israel's first king. Uh, the Bible describes Saul as being the tallest man in all of Israel. Uh, he, it talks a lot about how Saul looked and how he kind of stood out from the crowd. And if you know anything about um, Saul's story, uh, you'll actually find out that uh, there was a point where Saul kind of caved. And instead of doing what God asked him to do, uh, he caved to the crowd. Etc. Etc. So, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to pick up this story right here at where it at where it picks up uh, in First Samuel chapter 16, um, and it goes a little something like this. Basically, uh, at this point, David has become employed by Saul. Uh, David is just coming off the heels of his biggest victory. Uh, obviously, a story that many people, whether you know the Bible or not, know the story of David and Goliath. I mean, that's a phrase that's used all the time. The phrase is basically said, you know, it's a David and Goliath type battle. And they talk about some sort of underdog kind of deal. So David is just coming off that and um, he's kind of crushed it and he's caused a big victory for Israel. And um, what happens there is that essentially David uh, is then, man, the guy's on a roll. You know, as we say, he's batting a thousand. Um, and so Saul kind of puts him to work. And so Saul, still being the king, now you have to keep in mind, David was promised by um, uh, Samuel that he would be the king. And so at this point, Saul is uh, letting David work for him. He sends him out to battles. Um, in fact, it says essentially that every time David goes out, he has great victories. Uh, it's talking about how he just keeps winning, keeps winning, keeps winning, keeps winning. And <clears throat> he becomes such a winner um, that the women come up with a song for him. And so if you know anything about David, my man was like a guitarist. Uh, he would play, and when he would play, um, the Spirit of God would come on him in a way that was so powerful that the demons that Saul was dealing with uh, would de depart. So here's the deal. <clears throat> this is where we pick up the story. Every time David goes out, he keeps winning. So up to this point, David was a man's man. He had won the hearts of the men, the hearts of the warriors, the hearts of Saul. Uh, but now David has shifted to being a ladies' man. And why do I say that? It's because it's the women that would come out cheering and clapping every time David would return from victory. And they would say something to the effect of, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And um, there's nothing that can cause some level of jealousy between men when the man that you thought you were putting on starts to get more attention than you are, especially with the women. And that's exactly what starts to happen with David. And so all that to be said, my man, uh, David is just like, <laughs> he's just doing his job. Um, but he's getting more and more popular so much so that basically what Saul says, you know, how, how much longer till, uh, David has the whole kingdom, right? And so flash forward a couple of victories later, next thing we know, Saul's chilling, David's chilling, David's in the room. He's playing the, the, the liar, uh, to calm Saul down and out of nowhere, Saul picks up his spear, chucks it at David to try and kill him. It says that Saul tried to do this twice. And so what we actually see right now is a shift in uh, David and Saul's relationship. Because up to this point, Saul's like, that's my man. That's my guy. He can't do anything wrong. Uh, every time I send him out, he handles business. Uh, he killed Goliath when nobody else would. And I, I want to pause it right here. Um, I want to pause it because uh, I want to speak to an issue that a lot of people deal with, and that's the issue of insecurity. Um, and so when I, I pose this question to my guys in my life group, I say, hey, why do you think 
um, David decided to, or Saul decided to try and kill David. And you know, the toss, you know, the question got tossed around. Well, it was because of jealousy. Well, it was because of, you know, uh, um, Saul not being feeling like he was adequate. Well, it was because of embarrassment. I said, but let's go a little deeper. Why would Saul want to kill the guy that's doing nothing but good things for him? And somebody shouted out insecurity. And so right now, I know there's a bunch of you guys watching. Uh, I also know there's going to be a bunch of you guys listening <clears throat> to this at some point. I know there's going to be a bunch of people watching this at a later date. Every one of us has something that we're insecure about. It could be something in our physicality. It could be something of our past. It could be something um, that we're worried about in our future. It could be something, uh, you name it. There's a zillion things that we can be insecure about. Every one of us essentially will have an insecurity that's only going to cause us to do one of two things. We're either going to run at that insecurity and try to uh, not deal with it by killing it, or we are going to trust God to deal with our insecurity and trust him uh, with the bigger picture. Because you have to understand at this point, man, Saul could have just been like, yo, David's killing more people than I did. David's a bigger, more popular than me. Awesome. I'm here to raise up my next king. If Saul had no ego, he wouldn't have had an issue with David and the popularity he was getting. When we have no uh, egos, when we have a sense of humility about who we are, insecurity isn't a thing. But when we are concerned with popularity, when we are concerned with what people think, when we are concerned with making it, being accomplished, uh, you name a zillion things, uh, and then that doesn't happen, that's when insecurity raises its ugly head. That's when insecurity starts to pop up. And we will do a lot of things to not deal with that insecurity, right? So essentially, all of us are like Saul. And all of us have a David, so to speak. We have a thing in our life or things um, that cause that insecurity. The things that essentially tell us that we're inadequate. Things that tell us that we're not good enough, right? And most of us, I would say the majority of the people on the planet, they don't run at that insecurity. They don't deal with that insecurity properly. What they actually do uh, is they try to uh, not deal with it by trying to kill it, right? They try to avoid it, right? Um, <clears throat> think of the person that you might say one remark that you weren't even trying to be mean or rude and all of a sudden they react, right? Um, think of the person that uh, doesn't want to take a picture because they're too insecure about how they look. Uh, think of the person that essentially uh, will not deal with their finances because they are worried about losing them. Right? Think of the person that's super controlling to their spouse or to their girlfriend or to their boyfriend. Um, they do that because they don't have the security of that relationship. Um, I mean, there's a zillion things that we can name here, right? All of us, whether we like it or not, have a David, so to speak, in our lives. A thing that makes us feel less than, right? Um, but every single day we have the choice to take the high road or the low road, right? That's the real deal. We have the choice to take the high road or the low road, to take the lower seat or to want to put ourselves first. Jesus said himself, you know, if we want to be great, we have to become the least of these, okay? So at that moment, Saul could have said, you know what? David's destined to be greater than me. That's okay. I'm going to train him up to be better than me. Uh, but instead, he gets worried about keeping his kingdom. And aren't all of us really just, just that? We're just worried about keeping our kingdoms, our puny little <laughs> worlds, uh, and we'll stop at nothing to not lose it. And so... Uh, in spite of um, how good David has been to Saul, uh, he tries to kill him, okay? And <clears throat> what I want to tell you today is that fear, uh, this is a quote that I'm pulling, um, I didn't make this up, uh, in fact, I'm just going to paraphrase it, but it's a, it's a quote from Cus Amato. if you don't know who that is, uh, that was Mike Tyson's uh, boxing coach uh, when he started off, and he has this quote where he essentially talks about fear, that fear is like fire, um, that you can use fire to warm yourself, to cook your food, uh, but if you let fire get out of control, it will burn you down. And he was essentially equating this to fear. You can use fear to essentially power what you do, or you can use it to burn down your life. You can wor use fear uh, to essentially burn your whole kingdom down, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, a lot of us have fear. We have fear about the future. A lot of us 
are fearful about what's going on in the Ukraine right now. A lot of us are fearful about our country. We're fearful about our finances. We're fearful about our marriages. We're fearful about our relationships. We're fearful um, about where we're going or we're fearful about where we've been or where we're at right now. Fear will essentially leave us dead in our tracks or it can be the thing that powers us forward, okay? And so what we see right here, we see a man named Saul who for all intents and purposes, he had no reason to be afraid of David. Uh, fearful of David, fearful of what David could become, fearful that he would be considered inadequate, fearful that David would remind him of all his past mistakes, fearful um, that David showed him how he was inadequate, how he had made bad choices, how he had failed. And rather than Saul coming to grips with it, rather than Saul being real about it, rather than Saul, um, you know, dropping his pride, dropping his, uh, his ego, he just tries to kill him, okay? And we know how the story goes, but the reality is if he would have killed David, um, there would have been another one coming along right behind him. There's always going to be something that makes you afraid. There's always gonna be something that makes you feel inadequate. There's always gonna be something that tells you that you are less than. But your choice in that moment is to go, okay, I feel less than. What does God's word have to say about me? God's word says that when I am uh, the least of these, uh, then I can be the greatest. God says when I'm weak, that he can be strong. God's word says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully created, right? God says that he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble, okay? Today, whatever your fear is, whatever your insecurity is, whatever that thing is that is holding you back, rather than you picking up the spear, to try and kill it because you're scared of it, what if you hit your knees and said, thank you, God? What if you said, God, would you help me to deal with this insecurity? What if we gave God our insecurities today, right? What if we were willing to humble ourselves, just like he says, to humble ourselves under his great and mighty hand? What if we were willing to humble ourselves and die to ourselves and just simply say, you know what, God, I am inadequate. When I'm weak, you're strong. I must become less, you must become greater. Now, if you know anything about David's life, and we'll study it a little bit more over the next couple weeks, if you know anything about David's life, it's not that David was perfect. It's not that David didn't make mistakes. He made horrendous mistakes. David was a murderer. David was an adulterer. David was a greedy man. David was a man who at times did not trust God one bit. David was hot-headed. David was a cold-hearted killer. The difference between Saul and David is that when David saw his sin, when David saw the areas that he fell short in, when David said, okay, this is wrong, David, instead of running from God, he ran to him. Okay? That's the difference. Today, many of you might be running from God when he's saying run to him. Run to him with your inadequacies. Run to him with your uh, with your fear. Run to him with your insecurity. Run to him with <clears throat> all the areas that you might feel like you don't live up to. Okay? All right. If you like that, uh, if you're digging that, uh, I'm going to start to expand some of this stuff on my Patreon. So if you guys ever think like, man, that's really cool. I want to I wanna support KJ and what he does. Uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash KJ52. There's a couple different tiers on there you can support. I'm going to start adding some some really cool exclusive stuff to my Patreon. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I know i got a bunch of you guys have jumped in, jumped out, jumped in, jumped out. I know a couple of you guys are still on there. Still, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to drop it right below. I'll try to grab a couple of these questions. And um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be related to what I was talking about. If you have something that you would love to chat about <clears throat> as it relates to below. Or maybe you got something that you're like, man, um, you know, will you pray for me about this? Uh, I would love to do that right now. So I'm going to take just a couple minutes right here at the very end uh, to do just that. Uh, big shout out to everybody I see right now here in the chat room. I appreciate you. Um, if you ever want to follow this uh, as a podcast or just as the audio, you can head over to KJ52Podcast. Just search that uh, on Spotify. Uh, the audio of these will be up there. Uh, and you can also follow me on Spotify for that podcast or on iTunes to subscribe. All right. Let's go ahead and go over to the <clears throat> chat chat. The chatty chat, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. The chatty chats. What am I, uh, in fifth grade? Um, if you have anything, please drop it right below. 
Uh, Jeremy says, that's a word, Pastor KJ52. Thank you, sir. I super appreciate that. Um, God's word is amazing. If you want to dive a bit more into what I was talking about, head over to 1 Samuel um, chapter 16, uh, and you can kind of get the background story on about half of that that I was talking about. Um, Michelle says right here, I uh, love seeing you since playing in Hesperia Calvary Chapel. Uh, just thank you for being here. Please pray for the people in Ukraine. That is a great idea. We're going to pause right now and pray for what's going on in Ukraine. Father, we just come before you. Uh, we lift up this whole situation, God. Um, your, your heart is not for war. Your heart is not for killing. Your heart is not for people to be suffering. Uh, so we lift up the entire country of Ukraine. We lift up those that are there right now, those that are fighting for their freedom, um, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> And we pray that you would just have your way, that you would bring an end to the to the unnecessary killing, um, and that you would show yourself strong, that the churches of Ukraine would be strengthened, um, that they would call on you, that they would seek you, that they would shine brightly for you, and that uh, your purpose and your plans and your ways would be exalted above everything else. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Sarah, shout out to Sarah right now. <clears throat> Sarah says, Sarah says, I let my insecurities and my fears take over my life too long. I'm trying to let go. Okay. I hear you, Sarah. Um, insecurities are just like that flame analogy I was telling you about. Uh, it can either, um, essentially, it can either <clears throat> power you to run you and push you deeper to Christ, or it can burn you down. And so I just want to encourage you today, Sarah, that this would be the time that you would just uh, continue to call out to God, find out what his word has to say in his scripture and uh, use these insecurities to show that, you know, to help you understand that when you're weak, he can be strong. Okay, so let me encourage you with that. Um, <clears throat> Mitchell Wilson says, do you have a favorite prayer for humility? I mean, I know it's hokey. It's not hokey. Why would I say it's hokey? But the serenity prayer is still powerful to me. You know, God grant me the serenity to... How does it go? <laughs> I'm not even quoting it right. Grant me the serenity to something something things I can't overcome and the wisdom to know both I apologize I don't know it well um, but that's still one of my best ones uh, my favorite ones um, so let's keep this going anybody else I miss otherwise I'm gonna go ahead and jump off <clears throat> uh, for those that might be wondering where I am I'm actually in my childhood uh, backyard <laughs> and um, as you can tell this is South Florida because there is uh, Spanish music playing off in the distance along with a dog barking um, as the beautiful sun goes down right here in my backyard all right well it looks like that's about it um there it is my man or my my man you're not my man your name is crystal so you would be a woman crystal says kkj god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference there it is <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jet. I got things to do. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. In fact, let me pray for you guys real quick. Uh, if you ever have a prayer request or something you want to reach out to me, you can always hit me at kj52 at kj52.com. Um, and shameless self-plug, I have a brand new single dropping tomorrow called Undefeated. It's something I wrote uh, just at a low point in my life um, just to let you guys know that, uh, you know, in Christ, you are not defeated. Okay? All right. All right, let me pray for you guys. Father, thank you for those that tuned in. Uh, I pray today that you would just increase your word in their lives, help us to take our insecurities and just lay them at your feet and trust you uh, with every single aspect of them. We love you, we appreciate you, we need you, and we thank you for who you are in our lives, good and bad. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so if you dug this, uh, feel free to share it. Um, let somebody else know that might be struggling with insecurity what God can do in their lives. All right, peace, y'all. Have a blessed Sunday.